Good morning. We're down in Huntington Beach with Mr. Ian Cans, one of the founding fathers of the U.S. Open of Surfing. So, Ian, tell me a little bit about those instrumental days. Before, I think it was the first U.S. Open, and uh, it was uh, Don Meek and PT at uh, Prime Media, and uh, it was Prime Sports TV network that was before Fox Sports, and uh, I was working with them to help sort of coordinate the first US Open of surfing and it was really US Open was an offshoot of the OP Pro which I started back in 82 so that you know the big events here at Huntington are uh, you know, big crowd style events and it's cool to see a lot of international surfers coming and the American crowd really you know love surfing they love com coming down here and watching all of these guys rip these waves and in my experience even when it's small and not that good the surfing standard is so great you know the guys from all over the world and you know, a lot of the California surfers and East Coast surfers they are so good in these small waves that just from an average surfer you just see stuff that you couldn't imagine people could do and I think that's part of the magic of what the US Open is is it really gives a chance for the general surfing public just to see how incredible these guys are and it makes you stoked, makes you want to go surfing and try some of that A little stuff. bit about the days that you created a name for yourself during the um, Smirnoff contest in the 70s. Well, during the early 70s, uh, I think 1972 was the first year they ran the Smirnoff, and it was this, called the Smirnoff World Pro-Am, and it was considered the biggest and sort of like the uh, de facto world championship. So. Uh, in 1973, it was at Lonnie Akea, and I was an alternate. And I had my 100 bucks and ready to go, and some guy didn't show up, and I got in the event. And I was so stoked to be in the event. And I kept on making it through heats and into the final, and you know, Jeff Hackman, and Buttons Kaluhi Kalani, and uh, Larry Bertelman. I mean, the great names of the day were out there. And the surf was about 10 foot and peeling for just hundreds of yards out at Lonnie Akea. And only me and Hackman went and sat out the back and got the big bombs. And uh, every time a set would come, I'd go, hey, Jeff, go, 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 go. It was because I was just so stoked. And the next wave would be better. So we would be riding down, and the other guys were doing hot dog maneuvers on the inside. And it's always about going out the back, catching the big set waves, and you know, doing big surfing. So, I mean, I, I won that event in 73, and that really uh, convinced me that I was good enough to win major events. And I went on and won you know, quite a few other big major events in Hawaii, at Waimea and Haleiwa and Sunset. And uh, you know, for me, I'm a big guy, so I love the big waves in Hawaii. And uh, it was just really fantastic to sort of get the uh, belief that, wow, I'm, I'm good enough to compete with these guys and beat them. And that's, that's really what you need to do. Is, you know, A, you have to be good, but then you have to believe in yourself. So, so Ian, tell me about what you're doing today with uh, the surfing industry. Well, you know, I've done a lot of things in surfing and uh, you know, coaching with the NSSA team back in the 80s, uh, you know, competing myself, uh, running the ASP, running this event. And the thing that's most satisfying personally is, is training and coaching young guys and getting them to realize their potential and be successful. And so that's, uh, you know, for the last year I've been doing that again and you know, working with uh, some of the great young California surfers, the Gadowskis brothers, Austin Ware, uh, you know, Nate Yeomans, uh, Brett Simpson. All, these are all really, really hot surfers that have a good chance of uh, qualifying for the WCT and certainly winning the US Open. And uh, so it's really fun to work with them, push them, give them new skills and you know, show them what they can do to improve and then see them succeed. That you know, makes getting up in the morning at 3 o'clock in the morning and watching guys do well in South Africa you know, a lot of fun. Well, thank you again for your time and it sounds like a great thing. If anybody wanted to use a coach to help improve their game on the ASP or the WQS, how would they contact you? Well, they could go to globalsportsproject.com and there's an email link there, you can get my email there. And uh, I also have uh, coaching videos on YouTube under Global Sports Project. So there's some interesting tips in those videos for guys to learn. So you can contact me either way. Great, well thank you very much. No problem.